Hello, everybody. Uh, we're just going to wait a little bit to, uh, for a few more people to join, give them a little bit of time. Uh, we'll start in a few seconds. <laughs> Well, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, this uh, obviously is going to be recorded, so everybody can go back and look at it as well. Um, but I'll go ahead and start by introducing myself. My name is Cody Taylor. I'm the Assistant Director of Chapter Services for ZBT, uh, and I'll be reviewing the Standards Director Manual with you all tonight. Um, if, you, if anyone is here for any of the other uh, review sessions, um, we're also doing the BDD and uh, Communications Director review tonight as well. So. Um, that's a little bit later. If you're here for another one, let me know. But uh, um, that's at a different time. But we're going to be talking about the Standards Director Manual right now. Um, so, so to start off with the Standards Director Manual, um, you know, we we recently we recently updated the the all of execs manuals, uh, well, exec and the Standards Director Manual. We reviewed all of uh, redid all of them uh, to make them a lot more uh, condensed. You know, condensed a little bit. Um, I think in the past they were, you know, close to 50 pages long. Now, as you'll see, uh, we got it down to like around like 12 pages. So it's a lot more digestible. Um, that was done very intentionally so that, you know, only the important information is here um, and it's not, you know, a lot of filler stuff. So obviously we have our mission and our credo right up front, um, officer structure, uh, any links to any govern governance. Um, uh, you know, documents that you might need, um, and then uh, any resources from MyZBT. Um, so that's kind of the first part of the manual. What we're going to talk the, the bulk of our time with um, is the standards director responsibilities. Um, so I'm going to review all of these, and then uh, if you have any questions along the way, and you you know want to whether that you know you want to mute yourself and, and ask me, or if you just want to drop in the chat, I'll address it as well. Um, but yeah, what we're just going to start by reviewing the responsibilities. Um, and then, uh, excuse me. Yep. Uh, what time is the communications director meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, double check on that. It's going to be, um, let's see, it would start at, uh, it's about an hour from now. So what, what is that? 7.30? Yeah. 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 If, yeah. If you're, if you're on the East coast. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Um, it'll be a little bit for now, from now though. All right. Then I will be back then. <laughs> All right. Right on, man. Thank you. Cool, cool. Well, um, so yeah, to get back into it, uh, let's see. To get back into it, um, we have our basic considerations and recommendations page here. Um, basically, to explain this section, this is the responsibilities uh, paired with um, paired with you know the basics of each responsibility. So the basics are like the mandatory portions. You know, kind of just expand upon the responsibility a little bit more. Considerations are. Um, just things to think about when it comes to, uh, you know, each responsibility and then recommendations are exactly, you know, recommendations, uh, things that we've seen work from other, other chapters um, and just kind of things that we think would work well with each responsibility. Uh, so the first responsibility is that the standards director attends the transition program and sets goals and expectations of self each term. Um, so you might look at this and think, you know, I haven't been to a transition program. Uh, you know, and that's okay. It's something that, you know, something fairly new that we're pushing all of our chapters to do. Uh, and we've made a, re a requirement now that, you know, in the future, every exec will go through a transitions program. Um, but basically, you know, the gist of the, of the program is, is it start, it's at the beginning of each term, um, right after, you know, the election, um, and it will be executed by the incoming president. Uh, you you'll work with the executive board, obviously the standards director, is not a part of the executive board, but you work with the executive board to set goals together and expectations of each other. Uh, with the goals created in this program, you'll create an action plan to achieve them during your term. Um, you want to keep track of all your uh, resources specific to your position. Um, for example, the SPRV tool, which is found in, in the resource center of MyZBT and uh, Sample Brother Quality Standards as well. Uh, the next 
uh, responsibilities that the standards director uh, communicates with the chapter advisor on a regular basis. This is important, um, you know, for a number of reasons, but basically, you know, you just want to keep your advisor informed with all information as it pertains to the standards board, you know, whether that be um, standards board decisions or whatever it may be. Uh, you want to think about how often you're going to meet with your advisor, uh, you know, where you'll do it, if it's a virtual setting, if it's over the phone, if it's in person, and then think about what you need to provide, what updates you need to provide. Um, SBRB plans, you know, standards board cases, um, anything like that. Um, if the advisor is ever unavailable to uh, address a concern, uh, please contact your headquarters staff liaison. Uh, if you don't know who your headquarters staff liaison is, contact your president. Uh, he'll be able to uh, direct you in the right direction or just uh, contact DBT headquarters directly. Uh, the next responsibility is that the standards director serves as the chair of the standards board uh, and you know obviously the standards board is a completely separate entity uh, from the executive board um, to explain the standards board uh, you know basically is, is uh, that the standards board should consist of five brothers including the standards director each of the four board members should represent a different class of the chapter so freshman sophomore junior senior standards director uh, and board members uh, should all be elected uh, by the chapter each ac academic term. Um, as the chapter or colony grows, you can choose to add up to you know up to two additional brothers um, to the standards board, and it doesn't you know it, it doesn't matter what what class they represent, um, just as long as there are at least four that represent uh, you know the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior classes. Um, we recommend utilizing a uh, a group chat service to stay in contact with everybody um, as it pertains to standards board um, matters. Next responsibility is that the standards board director uh, assists in, assists the executive board in developing expectations and brotherhood quality standards and conducts education on each of these with the entire brotherhood. Um, any expectations that you set of the chapter can be built upon your chapter's brotherhood quality standards. Um, if your chapter does not have any, uh, have brotherhood quality standards or hasn't been updated, you know, in a few years or anything like that, examples are in the resource center on MyZBT. Uh, or you can also, you know, contact your headquarters staff liaison. We can help you actually build uh, and update any uh, brotherhood quality standards. But it is really kind of imperative that every chapter has a, you know, pretty regularly updated um, list of brotherhood quality standards that they utilize. Um, the standards board director uh, or the standards director will, will recognize um, brothers to exceed expectations as well. Um, so basically you want to think about how um, you will discuss these expectations with the chapter and how you will update the brother quality standards. So, you know, is that during, is that in a chapter meeting or is it a separate program that, you, you know, you want to meet with everybody and, and conduct um, separate from a chapter meeting? You know, think about what, what that will look like and what will work best for your chapter. Um, we recommend, you know, setting, uh, when setting the expectations, make sure to explain the why of each expectation and make sure that each expectation is clear. Ambiguous expectations uh, are hard to meet um, and hold people accountable to. Uh, as far as the rec recognition program, um, that's a good recommendation that, that uh, we like to, you know, tell chapters. Um, that can look like a brother of the week, scholar of the week, perfect chapter meeting attendance, most involved brother, you know, just something to recognize brothers that are going above and beyond, or just, you know, simply even meeting, uh, you know, the expectations that have set, been set out. Uh, an incentive program is uh, a great way to recognize brothers as well, um, and kind of give them something to work towards. Uh, this, you know, this could be, you know, look a variety of different ways. Um, it could be, you know, a raffle at the end of a month, or, you know, a room choice at a chapter facility dues discount, VIP access to social events. Uh, the next responsibility is that the standards uh, director, along with board members, recognize brothers who exceed expectations and hold those who violate policies, laws, expectations, and brother quality standards accountable. The board accepts grievances and complaints related to the brother's behavior, determines responsibility, and delivers outcomes that assist in changing the behavior reported. So, you know, this is kind of building upon some of the recommendations that we had in the last one, but, um, but the basics here are basically, you know, that the standards director should, should have a, you know, an email to keep track of all grievances and complaint. Um, and, uh, and basically, you know, have a place to kind of hold all those, uh, all of those grievances. 
Um, examples of failures to uphold expectations may include, but are not limited to, missing chapter meeting without an excuse, behavior at a social event, uh, not meeting a GPA requirement. Um, accountability should be consistent and equitable. So if two, you know, two guys miss chapter meeting um, without an excuse, you know, that, that outcome should be the same pretty much um, depending on, you know, depending, barring other circumstances. Uh, to determine responsibility violations, uh, the standards director meets with the standards board and uh, conducts an investigation if necessary. The standards board or the standards director will relay outcomes of any findings to the executive board and uh, and chapter advisor as well. Uh, and but specifically, no details should be shared um, that stays with, with the standards board. Uh, you want to think about what actions can be taken to investigate any grievances or complaints. Uh, and if you have grievances and complaints on multiple platforms, such as you know you get a text from somebody you know, as, as a complaint or an email, um, you really wanna make sure that you're compiling all that stuff in one place. You don't, uh, you know, lose track of them. Um, and, you know, so we recommend, you know, utilizing like Google Drive or something like that, an Excel sheet maybe um, to, to kind of hold on to, to all those uh, grievances in one place. Um, we recommend that you remind brothers of, of expectations of at least, uh, you know, at the beginning of each term. We like to say at headquarters that, you know, if you haven't told somebody in six months, you haven't told them at all. I think that's really true within uh, uh, college students and fraternity men uh, specifically. So just make sure that you're regularly um, uh, talking about these expectations and make sure that they're reiterated regularly. Um, ensure all brothers have your contact information, share your phone number and standards director email with the chapter should anyone want to reach out to with grievances or complaints. The next point is that the standards director shares standards board decisions, not details with the operations director and or attends executive meetings um, to report directly. The standards board director will attend executive board meetings as needed. Um, so, you know, kind of building upon the, the last point again, the standards director and standards board operate separate from the executive board uh, to specify, you know, specifically no members of the executive board should be a part of the standards board. You know, like I said before, they're two, two separate entities. Um, records of all details and decisions should be kept by the standards director. If the standards director needs to relay a decision about a standards board decision, uh, the director will attend an executive board meeting and uh, explain it to the executive board. Uh, the executive board may request the attendance of the standards director uh, if they wish to review documents, specifically like the brother quality standards, as that is kind of directly uh, one of the governing documents that the standards director works with the most. Uh, we recommend coordinating with the chapter president or operations director about timing and attendance of any executive board meetings. Uh, make sure that you you know you're aware of when they are uh, when they are where they are, um, in order to keep a clear record of why a person was brought to standards and what out, what the outcome was. Uh, utilize an Excel doc um, or you know a, a Google Sheets. I think it's called uh, something that it, you know you can kind of. Uh, keep all that information in one place and it can kind of live in one place um, so you don't lose anything. Depending on the outcome of a case, uh, the standards director should confer with any executive board member about the role in their decision. So, you know, for example, a decision requiring a brother uh, to have study hours because of his low GPA, the standards director could work with the operations director and the academic chair um, to, you know, help him put together an action plan. Or similarly with the, uh, you know, missing his community service requirement, you know, working with the community service chair uh, to devise a plan and make sure that he gets that. Uh, the next one is that the standards director hosts monthly standards board meetings, uh, regardless of if there is a, a specific grievance or complaint to review. So this is, you know, I think one of the, one of the points that I think uh, a lot of standards boards uh, forget, um, but they should be meeting regularly once a month, um, regardless of, you know, you know, if there's a case for review or not. Um, it's important to just talk through uh, plans for, um, you know, whether it's planning the SBRV vote um, or discussing ways to recognize brothers or reward brothers, um, you know, they should still be meeting regularly, uh, even if there's not um, a case to review. Uh, if the space is required to meet, uh, consider having a re reoccurring reservation, obviously, um, you know, or, you know, have, have utilize a space within your, within your chapter facilities as well. Uh, you can schedule these, you know, meetings at the same time uh, every month. Uh, make sure that, you know, it's a good time that works for everybody so that everybody is always able to attend. 
The next point is that the standards director collaborates with the president, operations director, and brother development director to conduct the SBRV vote, or SBRV. <laughs> um, the semi-annual brotherhood review vote is a required procedure uh, that every chapter um, must use to determine if each brother is maintaining his responsibilities and obligations as a brother of GBT. Uh, those brothers who are determined by a vote to not be maintaining their responsibilities are then uh, expelled from the EBT. Uh, the standards director has to provide uh, the number of standards board violations um, in while going through the, the SBRV. So just make sure that you have that uh, information available and ready to share um, during the SBRV. Uh, we recommend using the SBRV tool located in the resource center. Uh, for of MyGBT for executing the SBRV vote. It's a, it's a uh, tool that we created to just make it a little bit easier um, to compile all information for, for brothers and make it easy to do the vote as well. Uh, the standards director assists in the completion of standards of excellence requirements and submits materials as needed. Basically, the operations director is responsible for the submission process as a whole, um, but you will need to assist in the uh, submission process in areas you know, regarding information of uh, SBRB and the chapter standards board. Um, so, you know, you want to think about, you know, the operations director will assign you uh, materials to kind of work on uh, and think about, you know, how, how you will submit these items. Will you send them back to the operations director to make sure that, uh, you know, he can review them or will you just submit them yourself, uh, you know, work with the operations director on that and to, to get that figured out. Uh, we recommend um, coordinating, you know, with the operations director and executive board at the beginning of the year uh, to create a submission plan for, for the academic year so you're not scrambling uh, at the end of the year to uh, get everything done, uh, which is uh, sometimes what we see chapters do. Uh, the standards director shares negative trends based on submitted grievances and complaints with the executive board and specifically works with the executive board to ensure education is conducted on the trend areas. Um, so the standards director will aggregate information into trends and present it to the executive board to inform the programming director, brotherhood development directors, uh, educational programs. So for example, if, if the chapter um, kind of has a trend of low GPAs or failures to meet service or philanthropy requirements, um, you can kind of display that, you know, in a, uh, in a chart, you know, whatever, whatever makes it easier for you to kind of explain those trends. Um, and, and work with the executive board to kind of um, create, uh, I guess, an educational program uh, as needed per each, uh, each trend, which you kind of put out there. The standards director conducts a workshop on the brother quality standards and standards board process, both recognition and accountability um, for the entire brotherhood. Uh, these workshops should occur at least once a year at the beginning of an academic term uh, and can be conducted again as needed. Uh, be sure to ex discuss expectations, rules, regulations, uh, explain the plan in place for recognizing brothers that exceed expectations and also holding brothers accountable that do not um, meet the expectations. Um, the discussion around brother equality standards should be focused on understanding um, the standards and the why behind them. Um, like I said before, re the Resource Center uh, has a lot more resources on brother equality standards and the standards board process as well if, uh, you know, you want to have any more uh, information on it to, to, pre to present the chapter. Um, think about timing, location of these programs. Um, if you want to tack it on to a chapter meeting or if you want to do it as a separate, separate work or, you know, separate, entirely separate program as well. Um, we recommend creating a, a one page resource for the chapter explaining uh, the plans for recognizing brothers and holding brothers accountable um, and also just listing out expectations and brother quality standards as well. Uh, and now we're on to the last point, um, is, and it's that the standards director will develop and prepare materials throughout the year for their successor. So this is really important um, for the transition portion uh, of your role. Um, you you want to think about, you know, what materials you want to include in, the, uh, in, in these transition materials, uh, standards director manual, this being one of them, a uh, list of contacts for uh, headquarters, staff members, advisors, university professionals. Um, and information specific to, the, to your chapter. Um, another thing uh, that which should be listed in here is, is, you know, a list or a compilation of all past uh, standards cases. That's definitely something that should be passed on and kept um, uh, for the new standards director so that they're able to see 
um, you know, past standards, standards cases as well. Um, think about how you're going to compile this information. We recommend using a Google Drive. Uh, it's just an easy way to store, store everything and, uh, and, you know, have it live in one place so you don't lose anything. But yeah, so that is an overview of the uh, standards director um, role as, um, you know, as a physician. I wanted to open it back up to everybody uh, to see if there were any questions on any specific responsibilities or if there's any uh, further need for clarification on anything. I think I'm good for now. I just have one small question. Um, yeah. For the standards board, you mentioned um, for the four justices, um, one must be from each year. Uh, for our school, our school like does not, our college does not um, allow freshmen to rush. Mm -hmm. um, so is that really a big problem or yeah, I have mean, the requirement filled otherwise, but mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for I think for a case like that, um, it's it's obviously okay. Uh, you know, I think as long as you, I think the point there is really just to have representation of okay. the entire chapter. So if there literally are no freshmen in the chapter, um, then it's uh, you know it's obviously okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. Any other okay. questions? Any 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 other clarification points? Uh, no, I think that was it for me. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Right on. Well. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Um, let me know. Uh, my name's Cody Taylor, like I said before. Um, uh, you can reach out to, to uh, me through, uh, you know, the website as well if you have any further questions on, on the standards board. Um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for listening to me tonight. And, and uh, um, yeah, let me know if, 